The year was 1864, and Wild West settlers in the Arizona Territory did their best to carve out a hard scrabble life. Hard-working men labored under the relentless summer sun, punching cattle or toiling away in silver and copper mines. Women knew their place, heck, <laughs> they couldn't even vote. So they kept busy worrying about putting beans and bread on the table, borax in the family's Sunday best, all the while making sure to satisfy their husband's carnal desires. But one thing they didn't have to worry about was controlling their own reproductive rights and worrying about those pesky unwanted pregnancies. The menfolk handled that. And if they dared stand up for their rights, they and their doctor would be staring at two to five in the old hoose cow. And thanks to the MAGA Republican Party and a handful of backward judges, we're gonna go back to 1864 and relive those glory days where men controlled everything. Will it last? Hard to say, but you can find out today on this week's episode of Arizona, the wild, wild worst. So today I come with some good news. It looks like the war is finally over. Not in Gaza or Ukraine, I'm talking about the battle for the most embarrassing state in the Union. And it looks like we have a new winner. Sorry Florida, you had a good run. You'll be back. But in their efforts to make America great again, the Arizona Supreme Court just ruled that the state must adhere to a 160 year old law banning nearly all abortions. The law was enacted in 1864, during the first legislative assembly of the Territory of Arizona by the House of Representatives and Council. That surprisingly, consisted of 27 old men. Now, those ages may not look old, but remember, the average life expectancy in 1865 was just over 35 years. So senior citizens like Jackson McCracken, who sounds more like a hip-hop artist than a legislator, got jiggy with a two-week all-you-can-defeat human rights extravaganza. And stripping away women's reproductive rights was the least of their noble deeds. Also high on their to-do list, killing Native American Apache Indians and destroying their property and crops. So much so that they made a point to memorialize their murders. You know, for prosperity. So how do I know all of this? Well, I'm a bit of an expert on Arizona. You see, I grew up there. Spent a lot of time as a young man picking choya spines out of my fro. Don't judge. And over the decades, I've witnessed the cavalcade of incompetent politicians Arizona has shamefully elected. But believe it or not, the court's ruling is actually a good thing. But before I tell you why, please hit that like and subscribe button below. And if you can afford to throw a greenback or chunk of coal in my virtual tip jar, it helps keep my show and democracy alive. So with the exception of Joe Biden and a handful of others, Arizona voters have a history of making some pretty poor choices when it comes to electing their leaders. Take Paul Gosar, who's so despicable, his own brothers and sisters want him voted out of office. Then there's Republican Governor Fife Symington, the luckiest politician ever to resign from office. Fife was convicted on seven counts of bank fraud, but had the conviction overturned after a juror was dismissed for refusing to deliberate, which the courts found violated his rights to a fair trial. Before he could be retried, he received some good news from an old pal. You see, when Symington was a 19-year-old studying at Harvard, he was invited to a beach party outside the Kennedy compound in Hyannisport, don't get in the car with Teddy, where he rescued an intoxicated college frat boy who got caught up in a riptide in the Atlantic, nearly drowning. The grateful youth owed him his life and promised to pay him back, which he did 34 years later with a presidential pardon. The drunk kid, Bill Clinton. And who could forget Republican Governor Ev Meekum? Meekum was a prominent Phoenix car dealer whose first order of business was to cancel the MLK holiday for state workers. When confronted by civil rights activists in the black community, Meekum replied, you folks don't need another holiday. What you folks need are jobs. Jobs like the ones he cost Arizonans after Super Bowl 27 said, uh, we'll go somewhere else. You see, Ev was an old school racist who used racial slurs I won't even repeat. But suffice it to say, the year he was elected, Arizona voters definitely picked a ninny. He was impeached after being indicted by a grand jury on three counts of perjury, two counts of fraud, and one count of failing to report a $350,000 campaign contribution, charges which today would be referred to as a Republican resume builder. But at the top of the list is ex-Maricopa County Sheriff and racist convicted criminal Joe Arpaio, who conducted illegal immigration sweeps, arrested political opponents, allowed an inmate to die and destroyed evidence during the investigation, and said it was an honor for his department to be compared to the KKK. He was so busy violating civil civil rights, he ignored over 400 sex crimes, including 32 against children, most of them undocumented immigrants. Oh, and Arpaio was also convicted of criminal contempt of court for allowing his officers to arrest people because of the color of their skin for a year and a half after the government told him it was unconstitutional. He's cost Arizona taxpayers over a quarter of a billion dollars, but before he could be sentenced for his crimes, he was pardoned by Donald Trump. 
birds of a feather. Now, the court has seven judges, each and every one appointed by two Republicans. Two by Jan Brewer, best known for banning the teaching of ethnic studies classes in Arizona public schools, and five by Doug Ducey. Ducey was the sycophant who wanted to impress Trump so much, he threw up thousands of shipping containers as a makeshift border wall along the Mexico-Arizona border. Wow, they'll never get through that. After the federal government told him it was illegal, he left office, leaving Arizona taxpayers with a $200 million bill to remove them. Ducey does, however, deserve some props for upholding the law. You may remember him receiving a phone call from Trump in the middle of signing off on Joe Biden's victory in Arizona. If only he'd put that on speaker. The microphone was right there. So only six of the seven Arizona judges voted on the century and a half old ban. Justice Bill Montgomery recused himself after an anti-abortion post surfaced on his Facebook account, which is unbelievable. Someone still on Facebook? The measure passed by a four to two vote, and among those in favor was Clint Bollock, a Ducey appointee who somehow qualified for the highest court in the state with zero judicial experience. Must have got a good referral from his second son's godfather, Clarence Thomas. Also in favor was Catherine Hackett King, a member of the Conservative Federalist Society whose esteemed members include when the going gets tough, the tough get running, Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz, and disgraced ex-lawyer John Eastman, who's awaiting charges on nine felony counts for trying to steal the election from President Joe Biden. So here's the good news. Arizona has what's known as retention elections. When a judge's term expires, their names are placed on the ballot. Now, they don't face an opponent. Voters are simply asked if they deserve another term and vote yes or no, like yes, if they've helped protect a woman's health and empower her to control her own reproductive rights, or no, like if they think a woman should be forced to carry to term and deliver her stillborn baby, even if it came from her rapist uncle. And guess who's coming up for re-election? Bollock and King. There's also a group called Arizonans for Abortion Access that have collected over half a million signatures to put a measure on this November's ballot that would enshrine the right to abortion in the state's constitution. All the more reason why the November 5th election will be the most important in our lifetimes. Oh, before you go, there is one of Action Jackson's laws from 1864 that should be enforced. Section 3. Judges shall have the power to cause the arrest of any person who may interfere with any person legally entitled to vote or interrupt the proceedings and cause him to be tried for the offense, like the 11 fake Arizona electors who tried to steal our votes from Joe Biden in the 2020 election, a case that has been lingering since 2021. Katie. Well, we're waiting.